When John Lennon was a child, his mother told him <clears throat> that the only key to happiness, the, the only key to life is happiness. When John went to school, they gave him an assignment along with the whole class. And the assignment was all about what do you want to become when you grow old? And John wrote, happy. The teachers called him and then they asked him, John, you did not understand the assignment. And John Lennon replied, you know what? You don't understand life. In our life today, in this tangible world, we all are eventually wanting to be happy and joyous. But the road to this happiness is not direct though. So everybody wants respect in society. They want sufficient amount of money. Now sufficiency with money is a very subjective term. Nobody knows how much is too much. They all want to be famous in their own state by doing whatever they are doing. Everybody wants to be satisfied. They want to be secure. And only when they have achieved all these things, they want to be happy and joyous. The past three decades of economic development in India has done a lot to India than what we know about it. And the best of the impact is that it has given birth to this great Indian middle class. This great Indian middle class has learned to dream. That's another beautiful thing that has happened. And the three components of this great Indian middle class, the dream, of course, I'm talking about the three components are number one, they all have wanted to build their own home or house in an urban area. They're still wanting to. The second is they all wanting to have a very great groom for their brides, their daughters. And third and the last, they're wanting very great quality education for their children. And this great Indian middle class is going all the way. They're doing everything possible, working day and night to make all or some of these components of their dream come true. Now, there is seriously nothing wrong with the first and the second part, in relative sense, of course. But when it comes to the, to the second one, sorry, third one, educating the child, there is a serious flaw. I have come across a lot of quotes in my life. I, I really have been reading these quotes from here and there, from different perspectives and societies. Hello, Joey. And two of these greatest quotes that I've come across are subscribed to the children. The first quote is, every child comes or takes birth with a message that God is still not fed up of human beings. But the child does not come to this world all alone. He's brought into this world. So the second quote becomes much more interesting. And that reads, that the decision of having a children, a child, the decision of having a child is like letting the heart walk out of your body forever. Now, this is a very, very serious quote. I don't know how and what we understand about this, but I would want all of you, as a lot of people have been doing, to close your eyes this last time and not only to listen to me, but to feel through my words that I'm going to say. And please do it. You have worked very hard as a part belonging to that great Indian middle class. You have got yourself educated. You've got across a lot of barriers, faced the challenges, and you have made a great life out of it. You've made a good home, and you have an amazing kid. Boy or girl, depends. You're wanting everything. You're investing. You're doing everything for your child to do great in life. You want him to face the toughest of competitions to qualify it, to get educated in one of the best places possible, the biggest of the and the greatest of the institution you have ever known, the world has known for that matter. And you also want that he should be getting a good job in one of the Fortune 500 companies with a very, very fat package to satisfy all his material needs whatsoever of today. And of course, as it goes in Indian society. You also want him to get married in time and also want him to 
have kids good kids you want all these things to happen with your kid and there is nothing wrong with that and then suddenly this happens this is a classic video just open your eyes and look at this this was shot a story that really shook me as a counselor as a mentor and this was a video that this, this child is making just before he committed suicide i would have really wanted to listen to that but then it was been very very gruesome also at the same time in this video is talking about how his how his grand parents always used to say that he cannot do anything how he has ditched everybody when they wanted him to do so well in life and how he could not do anything in life how he has given up and how it has been so so very so very tormenting for him uh, for him to live this life and to go to to undergo the kind of trauma that he is undergoing right now and 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 he so much he remembers his mother he said that the only person attaching me still with this life is you but still what i'm undergoing right now is much much more than that attachment and let me just end it all up he also gives a message to his father that you know what you have one more son you take care of him very well he doesn't goes on to say how to take care of a child very well but he has a question and he says that that you take care of him very well he also gives a message to his younger brother that hey i am doing this do not even think of anything which is closer to this committing suicide i'm not going to show you the 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 the, the suicidal point but then like i'm just leaving you with this video to to make a context which is going to be very very clear they said that there is nothing as heavy people say that there is nothing as heavy as the as the coffin of your own son or a daughter on your own shoulders there's the heaviest thing in the life for any human to have and after this you suddenly want him to be back you are ready to give up everything you are make making all amendments you are ready to change yourself absolutely and want him back but he's gone you want to be uh, him him to be living you cannot do anything now but you did not do anything when it was required the most you could not see him sleeping in fetal positions for days you could not see him losing his charm for a period of time you did not he used to be a bundle of joy and you did not recognize when there was a behavioral change in him you kept on telling motivational stories on his face you kept on telling him as to how somebody has gone on to do this crack this competition whatever and so he can also do it your child did not die all of a sudden had this video been played you could have listened to that your child definitely did not die all of a sudden he was dying since last many days or probably many years but you could not recognize and why he died because and he was dying because he was trying to live up to the expectation which was way beyond his capacity and belief capacity and potential and belief it is you who believed him to be doing something and never he did so the quest always has been become you know between this becoming and being the parents focus on what their child could become based on an assumed future not on what they could be based on their flair and interests of today instead of providing their their kids wings and giving them courage to fly the parents treat their kids like kites with a string attached in their hands and they go on increasing the distance of the kite with them but still still the string is in their hands they never realize that whether his kite or their kite which they are holding is able to take that kind of a pressure and tension which they are exerting every time they are they are releasing this particular string from their hands and the distance is increasing and eventually one day it breaks and the kite goes forever this is a very interesting picture if you can look at a classic indian classroom model where the teacher is asking symbolically this is a very symbolic poster some of you have seen it also this crow monkey penguin elephant fish a seal and a, and a and a dog and the teacher is saying for a fair selection you all have to take up this test of climbing on this tree albert einstein once said everybody is a genius 
But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will make him, it will make him whole life believe that he is a stupid. How can you in this world possibly ask a fish to climb on a tree? But definitely, children mature at a different age. Their biological age is symbolic though. So if we have all 10 year olds, all 20 year olds in front of me, it is very, very easy for me without analyzing them to assume that they all hold equal competencies. But actually what lies within them is a, is a different maturity level, which is symbolic to this particular picture that is there. Smartness is directly related to grades is another very, very bad thing that has happened to the, to the, to the nation right now. Competencies such as creativity and problem solving qualities are either sidelined or even they are graded, not enhanced or encouraged. Another one is a very, very interesting poster again. If you can look at this, these are all sheep trying to come out of the, of the, of the barn. Now what is happening here is that there is only one gate and they're all following each other. Interesting thing is there is absolutely no boundary. So they're all trying to zip in through the gate only, thereby creating a lot of confusion and chaos at the gate. And that leads to a competition also. Those from right and left could have easily walked over and made their own path. It could have been a displacement, reduced the distance, and also they could have faster traveled. But no. Out of my all these years of counseling experience and thousands of students, a girl walks into me and she says that she's not having any friends. Why? Because of a simple reason. There'll be a distraction to her in, their comp in her competition. Another child tells me that he has not watched movies since last two years. Although he so much wants to watch it. How many times children have come, on, come up to me, in fact, and said that, you know what? How many times I have tried to search on internet of the safest and the, and the easiest method to die? And this is all happening all, all under our nose. A degree may be a passport to a job. Why? Because this is what we're seeking and not seeing it happening. A degree may be a passport to a job, but may not be a passport to success. And definitely, it is never a passport to happiness. The whole idea of education thus is uh, status and, and money. The old scriptures in India also says that, Vidya dadati vinayam, vinaya dadati patratam, Patratvad dhanmap noti dhanat dharmam sak tata sukham. It says, the context is, education leads to happiness. But it does not automatically makes you happy. It undergoes a process. We are a part of this universe, and it's the way we connect with the universe defines our happiness. And definitely this happens with what profession we choose after all that we have learned through the education that we have got. The whole context of learning has to be understood for this. The whole context of learning is layers of learning. The first layer of this learning is, of course, education. It comes through that institution of learning, which a person cannot create or recreate for himself. It includes all the teachers, books, professors, school, colleges, everything. The second layer is the exposure that the people should definitely get because they learn in one ecosystem and when they transact what they have, whatever they have learned from one ecosystem in diverse ecosystems, then their net learning increases. Why? Because the point of use is an absolute new discovery that they undergo. And the third and the last layer of learning is experience, when they applicate whatever they have learned. Now what happens here is, it never turns into experiential learning because most of the time what people learn never inspires them. Well, we have to fairly understand, I started the talk with John Lennon. Every child is an artist unless he's told he's not an artist. So let us try to bridge the gap for them to experience this happiness. Let us be the catalytic advantage for them and, and help our child find who he is to, to, to let him be. Trust me, he'll one day become whatever he is trying to become and he will become that. Thank you. <laughs>